Bienvenidos. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, wherever you are in the world. I'm glad that you're here joining us. Um, I'm Andrew Hockrottle, and over here to my side, who are you, mystery person? I'm Ben Stafford, and this is my second day here on Adobe Live. I'm pumped to be here. Uh, yes. I'm an artist, illustrator, designer, educator, all the above. Yes, day two, baby. Um, if you were here for day one, go ahead and say hi in chat. Um, chat was our MVP yesterday, Ben. Uh, can you describe a little bit, just not necessarily what we worked on, but the situations that happened yesterday? Can you give us a quick overview and just highlight the glory of chat? Yeah, the, the chat came in clutch. Not only did they help name the animals, but um, my, my work disappeared. It was gone forever into the ether. And uh, somebody went back on the recorded stream, was able to pull some of my uh, past work, send it to me. And uh, that's, that's, well, that was huge. So I was able to recreate what I had uh, made and all was, all was well. Yes, chat is MVP. So nice to see you all here. There are some great faces, uh, some familiar ones. Uh, Ecker Emor is here from yesterday, won one of our prizes, which I just sent you a link um, for your prize. And a lot of Mervins here, Umicorn, thanks for joining us. And our friend uh, John Mata, we'll be uh, looking at some stuff later today from there. And of course, our moderator, Voodoo Val, if you guys have any issues or anything, um, hit up Voodoo Val. She's our moderator, uh, totally awesome. And uh, if you have any questions for us or suggestions for the stream, drop them in chat. I'll be relaying everything over to Ben. Um, I do have a couple quick announcements. Uh, if you've never gone in and done the daily creative challenges, they happen every day. There is Photoshop, XD, and Illustrator. You can sign up for those at uh, blah, blah, blah. Behance.net, that's what it is, slash challenge, slash Illustrator, Photoshop, or XD. Um, so you can do those every day. They happen every day, all the day uh, here on Adobe Live. All right, then let's hop in and kind of talk a little bit about you, first of all, just sure. in general. So let's give an overview of kind of, we know that you're doing kind of logo marks. What's your approach to working like this? Uh, what are kind of the zones that could catch us up from yesterday? Yeah. So. I, I try to work as simplistically as possible. Uh, I, I'm kind of minimalist. Uh, I like things uh, using the least amount of shapes or angles or points as possible. Um, I like to take things away until there's nothing left to take away. I mentioned that yesterday. That's kind of when I know I'm done. Um, and yeah, I, I love to make things um, clever, smart. I like aha moments in my work if, if there is uh, room for that. Um, so yeah, I, I illustrate, I, I do logos, um, I, I do branding, um, I'm all over the board. I do collage work, I'm an artist as well. So yeah, hopefully we can check out some more of that later. Andrew's all got right one right now. now. <laughs> uh, yes, oh here, wait, we got full screen, we got full screen, let's go here. There we go. Yes, glorious. So yes, there are prints over there. You can go uh, to Ben's website and Val will drop that link for us. You can click on that shop and get some prints up. Um, and somebody made this joke yesterday that is just clicking for me now. Uh, you do a lot of work with animals, right? I think everything yeah. that we've seen pretty much across the board has been animals between these and what we've worked on. Uh, and somebody said that you were a minimalist and they said, oh, you're like a mini animalist. And I was like, yes, okay, it clicks <laughs> now because there are a lot of animals and we work in the minimalist style. So great job. Whoever Ever made that joke if you're here. I like it. Um, we kind of went over some foundations yesterday to get us started and we did do some work, but let's go over those foundations again. And sure. then we'll look at kind of the work we did, what we recovered, and kind yeah. of what you did last night. Yeah, sure. So uh, what's great about these, I'm going to even shrink this so we can see all five points, but you can still actually see all three of those animals pretty quickly. You still know what they are. It's a dog, uh, it's a butterfly, it's a bird. And when we create these logo marks, they should be scalable to a very, very small size. Think of it on like a, the binding of a book, or if we're talking digitally, a social media avatar. Uh, so there's things to remember as we create. A logo is simple, memorable, timeless, versatile, and appropriate. We talked a little bit about what timeless meant yesterday with Pizza Hut and how I would always want to be creating logos that, you know, ship and are used for years and years. And then somebody else comes along, rebrands everything, and then years after that, they go back to my logo because of its simplicity and timelessness. So that's my goal when I'm creating, I think 50, 60 years ahead. Yep. Um, also try to have a one color goal. I know it's hard. Yesterday we came and, we came and hit a brick wall on, on trying, to have, trying to figure out how to get this logo into be one color. Stay tuned, I did manage to figure that out. We did it. <laughs> we did it. Um, but that is the goal. Um, 
keep end application in mind. Like I just said, in, in this case, we're typically going to be seeing them as avatars, usually on some swag, so hats, t-shirts, uh, things like that. Uh, try not to look at other work before you begin. Reference source material first. It's really tempting to be like, oh, I really want to do a dog. So I'm going to go on Dribbble or Behance and look up dog. And that's going to get you into a lot of trouble because A, it's probably best to try to do something on your own, but B, you're probably going to make something that subconsciously looks like something you've seen, which yep. I've totally done before. And it's not fun to figure out like, oh man, somebody's already created something that looks just like this. Yep. Um, and then lastly, look for ways to be unique without adding detail. Subtraction is the key. Um, when there's nothing else to take away, that's when you know you're, you're, you're done. Yep. Uh, and uh, Anika is making a great, well, we have a couple things in chat that I wanted to talk to you real quick sure. is Mervin uh, is here and saying, I've been using Photoshop for quite some time now. I'm being uh, into photo manipulation, social media post brand strategy, but I feel like my logo design is a weakness and want to up my game. You're in the right place. Yeah, this is uh, it. Yeah, this is it. Ben, so like with that, what's something maybe that's people who are watching that are just getting started that are kind of trying to work on upping their logo game what's maybe like a base level thing or advice that you could give them starting out yeah i think so often maybe beginners are afraid of the pen tool and that's probably okay like you don't have to use the pen tool right away um what we did yesterday and what we're going to do today is continue to use the shapes tool we're going to use triangles and circles and rectangles and squares you can build a lot of great logos just using the shapes tool, shapes and pathfinder combined. Um, so if, it, if anything's intimidating, try to use the most basic elementary part of this technology that you can. And that's to me is the shapes tool. So yes, that's, absolutely. My, that's my advice. Yep. Uh, and there is such a crazy learning curve, learning turf, learning curve to that pen tool sometimes. Sure. Uh, and so you'll see today, we'll try to highlight it as we go. We'll go to outlines mode, kind of track along. It's all just shapes um, and try to work in just shapes. And we had one more thing. Um, oh, hi, Noah. Noah's here. Ben Hive, rise up. Thank you, Noah. Um, and one more thing from Anika. I just watched the replay. Please save your work. Yes, chat. That will be 100%. your goal today is to remind us to just save as we go along um, because we we will be, uh, yeah, that's your job. You'll, you'll be a part of this too. Um, Thank you, chat. Yes, thank you, chat. Uh, and if you have any questions, if you have suggestions, put them in chat. We had a great time yesterday. Chat was so spicy yesterday. Um, Y'all were on fire. So keep that going today. We'll have some fun and collaborate together um, and just get to hang out. So Ben, let's go back, recap a little bit about where we were. And then you yeah. did some work last night I that sure I think did. you want to walk us through. So uh, take the stage, take us away, Ben. Yeah. So yesterday we, we attempted to do a rooster and after two false starts, we made two really, really bad pieces of work. And we moved on from there and we got something that we, that we liked, uh, which is this, this little guy right here. I think his name was um waddles mcgee waddles mcgee i think that is what from happened the from the chat so we yes jeremy it. booth thank you jeremy <laughs> and uh so yeah after the stream i thought oh man I, I really need to rework this i need to keep going and so i continued to push it and see if i can get a one color design and it was working okay but i really wasn't quite um thrilled one of the major uh light bulb moments for me that went off was that all of these roosters have the red behind their eye even the white ones up here. Oh yeah. That's something that I didn't take into account yesterday. So again, referencing source material, I decided to pull one of these uh, shapes and put it in front of the white body. And that helped a ton too, <clears throat> excuse me. And so I, I, I rebuilt and I rebuilt and I figured some uh, angles out, um, more pathfinder things. And I just kept pushing it. Yeah, even add a little mouth right here to the beak. Um, I changed the eye. I loved that eye that we explored. That was one of the very first things that we did yesterday on the stream is check out the shapes. And we looked at the eye of the rooster and I really love that it gives it just a little bit more personality. Yep, which was basically um, a square that we rounded out in different sides, right? Correct. Yep. So we took this angle all the way down on, the, on its radius and this one just a little bit. Um, tried to make another black and white one here, but ultimately I came down to something like this. Ooh, we got it to one color. We did, and that's that's the little uh, secret down here is that I, I gave it some more time and, and effort and was able to figure out a one color. Um, and that's then I crazy. wanted to show the chat, like if you were to just take this one color and reverse it, this is what we would get. 
and that is not okay. It it like, definitely looks like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, but like a chicken. <laughs> like it's got like the bandana all the way sure. across. That's funny. So th Mutant that's Ninja that's chickens. a graphic design sin is to take something one color and just reverse it. Okay, so don't do don't do that. If you want to make something one color reversed, try to figure out a plan to do that. And this was my attempt here. Obviously, it may or may not be okay. I didn't spend too much time on it. I just wanted to show you that it can be done without reversing the uh, black and white one color. So, yep. And we talked a little bit about this yesterday. I think it's interesting that there are different versions of the logo for those different applications. Yes. Do you do that often to where the reversed out or something is an actual different logo and not just the same one with a different color? Um, typically, you know, because I, I usually try to create logos that are one color, I don't have that problem. This is really only a problem when there are two or more colors, you're gonna have to do something like this. Um, so no, I don't do it that often. The only thing that I would suggest is if you even have a one color logo that's positive, when you reverse it and make it white, you're gonna want to um, add a stroke on it. I, let, me just, let me just show you the difference here. This is gonna be super quick. Absolutely. And we have a very funny joke from Voodoo Val. I think we've somehow missed an opportunity here for this to be a coffee shop and have something called a dark roost. Oh, look at that. Bravo. Bravo, Val. Thank you for that joy. Val remembers. I like puns. So. Coffee from the coop. <laughs> <laughs> so imagine this uh, simple shape. It's a circle, obviously. It is a positive logo, and we wanted to reverse it. So we're gonna eye drop that white. This actually looks a little bit thicker than this. So what we would need to do is add a stroke. This, I, mean, I guess this is how I do it. Hold um, on, hold on, hold on. How did you just eye dropper a stroke color? I clicked I and it turns an eyebrow. So I hold shift. And as long as my, my outline is the uh, forward facing icon, I can just shift and pick any color I want. That's Thanks for joining the stream, mind. everyone. I'm never going to design again. Well, I had know. no idea that you could do that. That's, That's fantastic. I I'm spent glad you learned something. so much time eyedroppering, and then it just grabs the color, and then I have to like reverse it. That's amazing. Thank <laughs> you for that, Ben. You are welcome. What a so joy. Just, just by adding a five-point stroke on this white, um, that's helped maybe six. And I'm just looking at this just with my eyes. That looks more uh, equal, equal weight. So I would expand those shapes um, and then I would go to my Pathfinder. I would merge. I would double click to isolate this white layer and cut it and kill the stroke. So and that paste is place. Yep. We don't need it anymore. And now I can just paste my smaller circle. But can visually, you pull they, a, yeah. Can you pull a ruler to the top and bottom points just so we can like really see? Cause that's crazy that it looks so visual. Um, but it is just slightly off. If we zoom in on that white one, you can see that it's just slightly off from where that ruler is. Uh, and it's also taking out some from the inside as well. Yep. So if I were to take it right here, just a little bit. Man, that's why Ben is the king of this. Uh, that, ben, I think you're really good at uh, like detail refinement, like everything. Like, And I think that you have to have that with the minimalism that you do is that it's yes about the minimalism, but also about like the perfection of that minimalism. And we looked that at that sense. with angles yesterday as well. Um, I wanna talk real quick about this that's happening here. Um, how do you go about choosing type? How do you go about like finding the vibe to mm. match with that? What what happened that, to make this exist? Sure. Well, I knew I wanted to give it a unique personality and this type, that S is just fantastic. It's yes. super round, bulbous. And uh, I love the shape of these O's. They're not perfect circles. And I just thought that's a perfect little container for uh, Waddles here. And um, yeah, I think both of those things combined, this was the right font for me to choose. And when you're working on pairing fonts, so this is something that we talk about on a lot of streams, a lot of tutorials is trying to pair fonts, right? A lot of people just use the same font in the same family. I would um, not do that. Are, are these different? They are very different. Um, I think this one's called like stupendous or something like that and this one is called halogen i think that's uh mm, maybe chat you can help me i think i don't want to call it out because i don't want to be wrong but i'm pretty sure i know the type foundry i just don't want to be wrong so cool okay help me out 
Yes, uh, glorious pairing there. And yes, Carol says it's an egg shape in the oh, yes, Carol, it is. We were wondering who the first person was going to be. So yes, I've been waiting for a while. It's been on screen, and I was like, man, nobody's nobody's seeing it. But it is a true, time, it is a true Easter egg. So thank you for noticing. It's nice. it's those little aha moments that I try to work into my work. Um, that maybe people would drive past this bar and grill for 10 years and not even notice. And then all of a sudden one day they're like, Hey, that's an egg. Um, that that's fun for me. Yep. So, I had a, 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 a little bar restaurant near me and it was called toast. Um, and their logo was whatever. And it looked like a breakfast place. And I found, I, I was talking to them. I was like, why is it named toast? And they're like, Oh, it's because in the morning we have breakfast with toast. And then at night we can like make a toast and have some drinks. And I was like, what? Oh. And their logo had like, a. Uh, like the the glass shape or whatever in like the bottom of the O. And I was like, I just thought it was cool type. And I never <laughs> would have thought about that double meeting. That's amazing. Oh, that's fantastic. Yes. So, um, sorry. And somebody, uh, Eckermore said, what do you think about applying opposite fonts? So maybe that's the question of like, what, what's the approach mm -hmm. between having contrasting font fonts versus having complementary ones? I think you need complementary. I, I don't think you'd go so far as to say opposite. I don't even know what opposite fonts were to be, if you were talking about sans serif and serif or, or a, a handwritten script font, um, I usually just try to, to make them um, feel related. If they were a, a true like family, uh, like a brother and sister or some, some kind of relationship there that you can tell that they belong together, um, but they don't need to be the exact same person. Yep. Um, this is such a specific thing that I'm going to say uh, is there's, there's a thing when, when you're doing your eyebrows, that they're supposed to be sisters and not twins. And I think that that applies to type here as well, that they're supposed to be sisters, not twins. Uh, so related, go. not the same. I, I've never thought about the correlation, but yes, that's, totally. that's what it is. That makes sense. <laughs> um, okay, cool. I, so then, oh, go ahead. I just want to talk about this thing real quick. So yep. yesterday we had um, this little shape kind of come down here and it was creating this really, really awkward space right here. And I didn't know how to fix that until I was laying in bed. And, and obviously first thing this morning, I, I ran down here and fixed that. Um, but it was really just making these um, come down. And we had these awkward spaces back here as well. I think it was just making this one big corner radius uh, yep. that helped figure out that solution. So again- Oh, and you rounded out the waddle a bit as well, right? Oh, this was just- Oh, but then it went back. A, I, I did not end up choosing that route. Uh, I liked it, but I liked the more uniformity of this continuous line right here. Yep, and I love so. the green dot. That is like the you signature of a logo designer. What What is it? it? It means that's the latest version. This is the the Bible that I go to. If, if something is lost, I know which version I'm on. So I'll move yep. that green dot around as I go. Yep, I do the same thing with, uh, I use Pink Comic Sans and I uh, Peter Del Tondo taught me that. Uh, just okay. pink comic sans and that way i'm like i would never use this color pink i would never use comic sans and so i know like this is the a note to myself that's fair that's fair <laughs> that's Green awesome dot is mine so uh and then we did some mock-ups at the bottom there uh yep. just to kind of put it in context yep just to see what one color would be versus uh full color sometimes you have clients that are like hey the, the one color is this price or maybe we can do full color and it's five dollars more expensive so you want to yep. give them options also those colors, I just, in my brain, I'm thinking of this as like a bar and grill, which it is, um, of like that having beer in it, those colors would pop so oh, well on like, right. That like amber yellow, yeah. like the blue and contrast. Oh, that Good would look point. gorgeous. Good point. Um, all right. So we also did another thing yesterday that we could show off. And this was like a speed run. Um, if you're here at the end of stream, we were like, let's see how fast that we can do this. Um, and do you want to talk a little bit about what we built? Yeah, we, we kind of disregarded any of the references I had here. And I was just trying to go off. Let's try to make a bear in, I don't know, was it 10 minutes, 15 minutes? And uh, just using simple shapes and the bear that we have in our heads, maybe when we think of a, a bear or teddy bear. Um, and it's obviously a little bit more icon iconish. Um, but we made two separate bears. One was a little bit harsher. He's a little bit uh, angry or maybe just tired and then we made a happy one um who's maybe a little bit more bubbly and chubby um squishy squishy i like that uh and then i was able to turn that into a black and white logo as well uh i wanted to make sure i could do it and so i did yes this would i feel like this is a, a great tag for like a street artist like this would be a great mm. stencil to just on a wall somewhere i like that 
That's super fun. And we also um, talked about things that are um, centered because the uh, the nose or this whole muzzle was centered to the circle, but that puts it right about here, which obviously is not um, visually centered. It's mathematically centered and that's not correct. So we did end up moving that, moving that bear down and now it looks all right. Yep. Uh, and someone in chat says, yes, the Blue Bear Honey Co. Yes, yes. that is it. Blue Bear Honey Company. Um, and I want to real quick, we talked about working not with the pen tool, working with simple shapes. This one, I don't think we even touched the pen tool on this entire thing, did. right? Nope. Um, can we go into outline mode just to see kind of the shapes that we've used on these? <clears throat> Magic, y'all. That's all it is. It's circles. Uh, it's some rectangles in there and then the triangles on the cheeks. And that's really all that it is, um, is working with those simple shapes and kind of augmenting them until we get to a place that we want, especially over on the left or sorry, on the right, we've made those little curves with just ovals. Yep. And I, and I chose to keep them in there, obviously, just because we can adjust that if we needed to, yep. you could, you could adjust and maybe cut. <laughs> you just got Getting happier. more and more excited. Uh, I actually like that. I, I definitely want the animation of like those starting there and then just oh, slowly creeping up. That's fantastic. <laughs> slowly getting so excited. If you're an animator, reach out to me. I'll, I'll yes. give you this file. You can play around with it. Oh, that? send it to me, Ben. I could do that. I can, okay. I can, I can get those eyes. <laughs> I can get those eyes moving. Sure, um, all right. So let's hop in. We're doing some stuff today. We're going to be working on uh, a deer, doe a deer. Um, yes. Is this a female deer? This is a buck. Okay, well, all right. It's got the ant, big antlers. It's try. I, I, I tried the joke. It, it's swinging the mess. <laughs> we tried. Um, so we are going to work on this today, and I believe that uh, we're going to try to keep it geometric, of course, the mm -hmm. minimal animal, um, and work it's with the animals. Yes, it's a yes. I love that. Um, let's jump in. Let's let's let's, let's go jump for in it. today. We want to try something a little bit different. So yesterday we went without a brief. We just were trying to trying to go with simplicity, same thing with the bear. Uh, today, I wanted to walk in here with um, an objectives and mood board and things that we can think about while we design this. Ooh, a brief. Uh, so this is for Deer Creek Auto Parts. And um, we're just gonna walk through here. So who is Deer Creek Auto Parts? Deer Creek Auto Parts is a family run, father and two sons shop in a small town of 20,000 people. It's been in business for 35 years and is the go-to place for locals to get parts and services or service for their automobiles. Uh, Deer Creek Auto Parts takes pride in their professional quality services, parts, and their knowledge. Uh, I won't read all of this thing, but it's good to have visual objective goals. Uh, the client wanted something that was simple, trusted, and professional. We have a few more uh, adjectives to glean from, from the heartland, friendly, straightforward, reliable, authentic, sincere, and top tier, clean, and buttoned up. And then and then um, must-haves. So based on our prior conversations, you've stated that you need the following items represented in the logo and brand. Must utilize imagery of deer or part of a deer. Must feel simple, trusted, and professional. Must utilize some kind of red, white, and blue, and must be simple. And then this is the mood board that we're going with, and I have a... I have a special little image on here. Uh, does anybody recognize who did this? Oh yeah, Ben. That's that's like a very special thing. So yes, chat. Let us know if you if you if you recognize that. If not, uh, our clue is that maybe the person who did our uh, community spotlight today is going to be the person who did that. Uh, I believe they're in chat. So call it out, and we'll say hi uh, when you pop up in chat. That's right. Uh, and sorry, a question uh, coming in from Voodoo Val. Did you make this or did your client send this? We always make our mood boards. So after a conversation that we have with our clients, um, we'll, we'll kind of send them a whole bunch of images on this mood board and say, we're not giving you these because um, individually we want to call stuff out. It's like we were to make a stew. If we were to throw all of these images into a stew and stir it up over the uh, stove, what would be the end result? What would this taste like? What would it, what would it uh, texture wise feel like, smell like? Um, and hopefully you'd get something that looked like all of these things combined. So I did, I usually throw in a lot of my work. Um, so like the dog up here, this um, tree compass logo, this Cardinal's mine, this R logo is mine, US Space Force is mine. But um, really we're just trying to get this um, feel 
uh, to the client so they can sign off on it before we begin. Yep. And uh, the brief is something that you create or is that something that the client would provide to you? Like we, the we usually copy and have that kind of stuff? A, that's, a, that's a good question. We usually have a questionnaire. It's pretty big, lots of questions, and they fill that out. And so they have, a, ha, have an opportunity to, to tell us about themselves. And so when we give these adjectives back that we went over on this page, um, we are usually spitting information back out that they've told us like, hey, we hear that you want to be simple. You have real conversations with people. Hey, we, we hear that you want to be trusted. Um, you don't commit highway robbery. You know, you, you get the parts you need for the customers that come in and you're really professional. You really care about quality, um, like five stars. This is important to you. So, yep. and then they say, yes, these three things resonate with us. This is exactly who we are. Um, and the must haves can come directly from the client. Let's say they're very strict about this. Hey, we, we, we already have a red, white, and blue theme. Everybody knows us by our um, red, white, and blue colors. So we got to keep those. Um, and uh, we need to have a deer. Currently, yep. they don't have a deer. It's just type. So let's let's try to use a deer. Yep. And it's so important to tell the clients that you hear them and sometimes like show them that you hear them. Uh, and I think a brief like this is so great to be like, cool, here's what we've heard. Are these the goals we're going for? I've listened. I hear you. I see you. Let's start the project. Yes, absolutely. So I think we can go ahead and begin. We have a pretty good feel. We can come back here later. Typically, when we, whenever we pitch the logo to them, we will show them this mood board again, only we will take one of my logos out and include the new one in there. Yes, so, I've stolen that from you, Ben. I have definitely <laughs> used that in presentations because I think it's the smartest thing to do. It's nice to be like, hey, you remember this thing that you approved that you, that you said you liked all of these things combined? Well, hey, now your logo fits in there nicely and it doesn't feel like it, it's... Well, it just feels like it belongs. Yep. Um, so that's kind of the direction that I think we're, we're headed. We have some of these uh, logos that I was able to, to bang out really quickly and hopefully they work. Um, I like these black ones here that are more filled in. Um, so we'll, we'll go ahead and give this a shot. I, I only pulled out this reference because I really liked the uh, profile. Yep, and the angularness. We're working with, yes, angles and triangles and uh, other shapes. Um, so let's, let's go ahead and do it. Yep. Are there and any other questions from chat? If, if uh, something's not currently, okay. not currently, uh, chat, if you have questions, go ahead and drop those in. Um, what I think is interesting, and we talked about this a little bit yesterday and people had questions about using reference, not using reference. Uh, this is a great example of using reference to find those simple shapes that if you're working in minimal style, finding a reference like this to where you're like, Oh, I literally see a triangle. Let's use that and see what we can do with it. Um, and not necessarily tracing over or anything like that, but just being able to see the pieces that you could be using. True. That's exactly right. And just even like, I don't even like tracing over my work because um, I know what shapes I need to use in order to, to build that. Um, but obviously, just like yesterday, we're going we're gonna to make things and then delete things or move on. Not delete. We're, we're going to iterate. Um, Let's see where this takes us. But I love I love that that language of iterating. Like we're gonna delete it. We'll, we'll like iterate on it. And it's like we're gonna banish it to the nether realm. <laughs> <laughs> I've definitely done that before, where I put just a red circle, and the ideas that I don't like get like put in time out over in this red <laughs> circle on my artboard. <laughs> I like that. So uh, I can Alfonso, already... Oh, sorry. Go Alfonso ahead. has a question. Was there anything in the brief about auto parts being related or needed to tie into the design? Or is that not something that we're concerned about? That is not something we're concerned about. Cool. Uh, it was not a part of the brief. They didn't feel concerned about it. So I'm not either. Cool. Um, I can already tell that I wish that these um, were more angled like this. But I don't know. We, we may come back to it. Whatever the angle is, I want to keep that consistent. Yep. And knowing that you're going to use it over and over and over, because I think usually, in, I mean, in the process yesterday, it was kind of just like, okay, yeah, we'll figure that out eventually. Let's try another thing. But knowing that that's kind of foundational to everything, it feels like something that you kind of want to figure out on the front end, right? Right, exactly. And so I'm, I'm taking this same shape because I know the angle's the same. That it just saves me time. I'm going to make the cut again. Um, Yeah. That would be great to be able to, uh, I guess you could just copy and paste them. 
Like have something to where you could just like lock an angle. So that it's like, cool, all of, like, you know how they have oh, snapping to points or whatever? Yeah. It's like everything that I move needs well, to move at a 27-degree angle or whatever. I've, I've always appreciated the shift goes 45 degrees. Yeah. Um, and then zero and 90, but that would be awesome if I could program something in between or program yes. something that is very specific. That's it. That's a fun idea. Adobe, hello. Um, I'm going to be <laughs> submitting a request to user voice um, of this new feature. That's a really cool idea to be able to, yeah, hold shift and alter option or whatever and designate that it rotates by 27 degrees, yes. uh, whatever. So that, that you would be so Ooh, cool. That's a fun idea. Val, can we just make a note of that so that I can actually talk to someone <laughs> about that? Because that's a really fun idea that I want incorporated. <laughs> So this is a little bit tricky because I, I, I see that I made a round edge here and a round edge here. Um, and I don't want to, I want those to be um, the same. So I think I'm going to have to create this with a stroke, which is fine. But that'll give me a little bit more flexibility. Let's see if this works. Yes, we'll settle. Uh, and someone asked, how many options do you present to a client usually? What? I won. Ben, this um, is the best thing. Yes. Talk I, about I, it. I went through years of presenting three and uh, it was a disaster every time because they just wanted to, um, you know, put them all together, create some kind of conglomerate. Um, and that's not fun. That's not fun for anybody. Um, so instead of going back revision after revision, we, we present one because at that stage we've done 80% of the work is conversations, questionnaires, mood boards, uh, objective goals. And after that, if if you don't, or if the client doesn't like the work, I, I'd hate to say it, but that's kind of on, on you, the designer. Um, that's not on them. Um, we, we oftentimes maybe want to blame the client, but um, giving them three different options is kind of funny because the objective goals should be pretty clear. Uh, if you have two options that you're just like, I don't care which one they pick, this is fantastic. You can go ahead and try something like that. I would just be worried that they wouldn't select one. Um, yes, but I don't know. Yes, uh, and free is... to do what, what works for them, but we've had great success. Um, just presenting one. Yep. And I think that like, there's a certain magic. And again, I've totally copied you on this idea with a lot of clients that, it, it, once you get there, it's like, oh, we've gotten here together. Like, why would we need to True. explore the things for us to pick one when right. like we've gotten to this one together? And we're like, oh yeah, this we've agreed all the way that this should be the idea. This should be the application. Like we've gone here together. Why do we need three options to pick from? Right. Um, and Doc is saying that you can alter that in settings. I've been like behind no looking in settings. Doc, please tell me where. I've been trying to find it and I couldn't figure it out here uh, on my computer. So if it, please give us give us some info on that. Um, so I like where we're at. I do wish it was more uh, angular. Uh, and Val just dropped the... Uh, link in there. And I just want to talk about this in general um, for all of our friends. There's something called user voice. And I don't think a lot of people know about this, but user voice is basically the direct contact to Adobe. Um, you can submit feedback on products, bugs that you find, feature requests that you want. Um, that link that Val just posted for user voice is literally like it goes to an actual person. I've been in a meeting wow. and the guy's like, hey, you know when Illustrator crashes and you send a, a bug report or like you submit something to, that ends up in my email. So it is an actual real person <laughs> that is reading those uh, and uh, kind of giving back. So if you have ideas or things, you can submit it to user voice. All right, Doc says, Illustrator preferences, smart guides, construction guides. All right, I'm gonna get in here, Ben, and see if this is a thing. Okay. I have also, I don't know if I've ever talked to you about this, Ben, but you know how when you're working on something and it gets quiet and then you're kind of just under your breath saying things. <laughs> so I want to design podcast. That's just that. Like it's just designers going, okay. <laughs> was I, was I talking? Was I, saying I was, something? I was talking. It was me. Okay. I caught myself. Yes. Uh, 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 uh. I like that. Uh, maybe something in between. 
Yeah, I like that. I'm really, so obviously I'm designing the positive space, but I'm also really looking at the negative space. Yep. Uh, that's something that you should be aware of when you're making logos, especially one color logos is what does this in here look like? Um, this looked too, um, I don't even know the word, uh, uncomfortable. This is almost this trap negative space. Um, so let's open that up a little bit. This curve looked kind of funky. So making it rounder, uh, a larger radius feels right. Yes. And um, yes, uh, Doc, I still can't figure it out or see it. So after at some point, I'm going to get you on a call and have you show me that uh, because I do want to share it with everyone. Uh, maybe next week as I do some Illustrator Daily Creative Challenges, maybe we'll uh, show that off because I definitely want to learn where that is, what that is. So what I'm going to do here to make the ear uh, is pull that exact same shape out that we've used for the head and the body, uh, but probably just cut this part off. I think, I think, I think. Size right now, I don't know, but... Um... And it's interesting uh, between those two of the like posture and weight of the logo. You've talked about weight a lot that we have the one on the left feels more regal and the one on the right maybe feels more like established. And it's literally just like the difference in those heights, which is crazy. That is interesting. Now, I guess I'm not looking at the reference, but I guess the ears are massively bigger. Uh, I'm afraid, a, to get too, I'm afraid one, to get too big only because uh, obviously we will scale this down. And yeah, it's already, the, yeah, it's already throwing off the geometry of it. And so making yeah. it any more throw off feels weird. I'm okay with keeping it. It's just, uh, I don't want to make it any bigger to call, call it out. Yeah. Um, oh, look at that. Well, obviously this eyes almost just made itself. Magic. That's just the ear. That's just the ear. It's just um, the ear. Oh, that's so good. But maybe there can be something done there. I don't know. And is the ear just the face? We use similar angles. Yes. Well, it's the same idea. It's, it's yes. the same. It's the same angle. Uh, almost the same weight. I did have to chop off that right part. Um, yeah, it's pretty close. Um, one thing I wanted to try was a star instead of a. Oh, here's a let's, question that I'm just iterate. interested. Sorry. This is this is like the equivalent of the designer personality test in my brain. How do you make uh, triangles? Um, I go up to triangles here. I click. Or did you say triangles or stars? Triangles. Okay, I I mentioned this yesterday. I go to polygon tool, click option, and then click. Okay. Cool. Uh, it, I feel like that is the designer like personality test because you can make it. I've seen people make it to where they make a square and take out one of the points. And then I've seen people use the star tool and make a three pointed star to make a triangle. Well, uh, I think if you try a three pointed star, it's going to add more points. It does. It adds a couple points. So you have to um, delete those. Yes. And so I was, I was curious what your method was, which I think that the polygon tool is the right way to do it. Cause you get the right points, the I right way. I would assume way. so. And also like when you're making a triangle with a square, that's also not going to be equilateral. Yes. So. Which we learned about yesterday. <laughs> yep. You'd have to really kind of play around and figure that out, put it in a square. But. All right. Uh, some questions coming in from chat. Is it safe to make the logo one-sided rather than be centralized? So maybe to make it kind of leaning to one or heading in one direction instead of being locked into kind of a center? Because this feels more kind of to the left of what we were using yesterday. It was very like locked into a center point. Uh, this feels more organic. Do you have any thoughts between like the geometric centered versus like a geometric kind of more organic shape? I don't think it matters. Yeah. Uh, I think we're trying to, if we remember the brief uh, and we look at some of these things, um, I think that we can get away with doing something that's not perfectly center. Um, looking at these objective goals being something that's reliable, sincere, straightforward, um, buttoned up. I, th I think we're, we're getting pretty close. Yep. And One Mervin's I saying, I used to draw my triangles with the pen tool. Yikes. Oh, no. That's rough. I wanted to look at this angle, which is uh, along the star. That's 36 degrees. And if I wanted to measure our thing here, it's 
36 degrees. Ooh. That was uh, per chance. There's no way I could have planned that. Oh, weird. Each point of the star is a 10 degree. Because it's 36, five points. 72. Yeah, that's weird. I never cool. thought about stars being like geometric math of just coming down to a simple number, but that's totally what it is. That's true. Um, I like where this is this is at right now. Um, Ooh, and sorry, Beth just gave us, thank you, Beth. Beth just gave us a pro tip. Um, and this is something that we've shown on Illustrator Daily Creative Challenges that is magic. If you're using the polygon tool, if you click and hold, you can use the up and down arrows to do different amounts of sides to that polygon. Wait, hold on a second. Have you done this, Ben? So yeah, click and hold and then up and down. Wait, how do I go up and down? Just the arrow keys. What the <laughs> heck? Right? That Magic. Is so cool. Yes. Who said that? Somebody named Beth? Somebody named Beth. Somebody named Not Beth Stafford. Beth. It is your Beth. Wow. She's been holding out on you. Secrets. Design secrets. We sit next to each other. We've sat next to each other for eight years. And you've probably made so many polygons. Never. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. It's fine. Oh boy, I'm not going to be able to live that one down. Yep. I, I had taught probably six rounds of Illustrator challenges talking about polygons until I learned that. And I was like, I have to share with everyone. <laughs> so this actually feels really good to me. I'm going to probably just do a couple more things here. One is the alignment of that star. Um, probably can't happen to be perfect. Maybe I want that angle to be sitting right here in the center where that yep. angle meets. Um, it's not half bad. I also, one thing that you can do when you're dealing with stars um, is to make a circle. Hold on. I'm going to make it a different color so we can all see it. Is that not? Okay, so from right here, I'm gonna go out as far as I can. And I realize I'm hitting the top left before the bottom. Uh -huh. So I'm gonna drag both of these down. Make this a little bit wider. We're almost there. I'd say we're pretty darn close. Obviously, again, this is visual alignment. It's not mathematical. So if there's a little bit off, I wouldn't worry about it. In fact, I'm just gonna make it just a little bit bigger. Oh, that is touchy. Ooh. Ooh. It's there's a smart guide happening somewhere in there. Yes, there is. You know what? I'm okay with the offshoot. Let's just kill the circle now. Now we have this wonderful star centered to this space. Um, and it shares the same middle point. That sits kind of low. It does feel need, visually I, low. I think I'm going to need to up it just a little bit. Again, this is visually, so you can do things like this. That feels okay. Yeah, that feels okay. It's feeling all right. It it kind of, and I'm gonna say this, and this is like not this is not a good thing to say at this point in the process. <laughs> it it almost is giving me like the like XI vibe, like the like like a dead deer vibe for some reason. Oh, because of the eye, because of the yeah, star? yeah. Interesting. Which again, is not helpful, but that's where my that's brain okay. went for uh, like half a second. It's okay. I feel like we could make another eye that feels similar to this one. He just looks angry. And I like, you know, we, we talked about in the brief, the, uh, oh, what was it? Top tier, maybe five stars, something like that. We set the bar high. Yep. Um, there's something about the quality of stars. I like, and the fact that they use red, white, and blue, I think that's cool. They're home, hometown. Uh, one thing I noticed here is that my antlers didn't go all the way over. So I'm just going to drag that ruler out to make a guide. Did I just? Oh, because you used guess? a stroke. Oh man, that was, that was so close. What? That's the biggest joy is when you're like, cool, I hit that pixel perfect. And I think there were no guides on it. just happened. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Uh, and Mervin, yes, I think this the answer to this is yes, is Ben, can we exaggerate the illustration process in logos as we do for like a caricature? 
Um, exaggerate how? I'd like to know a little bit more specifically. I think, yeah. like, are, are you talking about like relationship, like size things? Because Yes, I think so. Yes, absolutely. I think we're trying to just make a recognizable animal. And if we're getting the ear and the eye and the antlers and the head shape is, is pretty close, um, I think that's what we're shooting for. We're just looking for um, likeness. I, lot, I watch a lot of Portrait Artist of the Year. Have you ever watched this show, Andrew? No. Portrait Artist of the Year. We don't live in the UK. It's a UK show. Um, if we have anybody from the UK today, uh, I would love to say hi. I, I absolutely adore a lot of things that come out of there. But one of them is Portrait Artist of the Year is a TV show. Uh, it's almost like Great British Bake Off, but even more like wonderful because it's art and um, portrait artists come and they uh, paint people that are sitting down uh, for maybe is it three hours, four hours. Um, and you get to see what 12 artists or nine artists do in a matter of hours and how each person does something very differently. Uh, but they always preach likeness. It doesn't have to look like a, like a photo, but if you can get the likeness of a person in a portrait, you, you, you win. Yep. And so I think I have to think similarly when I do logos, especially animals, like, is, does this have a likeness of a deer? And I would say, yes. Uh, realistically though, uh, this antler goes up and away from, um, I don't know how many deers have the antlers that go completely forward. Uh, I've drawn both here, some that go out, like this top one, looks maybe more realistic to what the deers actually look like, uh, but to fit our perfectly rectangle here, I made everything fit within this kind of grid. Ooh. Except for the ear. I, I get it, but. Um, yes, and there are a lot of people from UK. So Carolyn's here in the UK. We have Gareth from Scotland. A lot of people saying that they love this show. Yes. And well, it, here's the problem. There's no way to watch it legally um, unless somebody like up, uploads it to YouTube. And that's how I've watched it. Some blessed oh, that's souls rough. are uploading to YouTube and I just watch whatever episodes are available, but. It truly is uh, fantastic. So if you're a fan of the Great British Bake Off, um, definitely Lit check out Portrait Artists of the Year. Literally someone just said that. It's like the Bake Off for artists. Absolutely. Uh, and someone and just I'm pointed not, I want to say bakers are artists in their own right. So Yes. Someone just pointed this out, which is really interesting and 0% intentional, I think, is that it looks like there's kind of a, an eagle flying on the negative space of the antlers. And it has oh, like that man. major male vibe, right? That is cool, especially since that was on our uh, mood board. I was going to say, so it like fits in perfect. Too soon, too soon. Uh, yeah, we were trying to get that USA, made in the USA vibe. It's Got totally nice the vibe. You know what? I'll, I'll leave it because I think that's fun. I, I don't want to do the uh, too much thing and start adding in, you know, oh, we could we could make some really fun wings here or like what happens if we put an eye and the beak. Um, this is a masterclass in like, <laughs> okay, so this logo is gonna be a million things. I, I don't wanna do that. I think there's some really clever people out there that have done stuff for like the fish and wildlife, US stuff. Uh, props to you, I, I love that stuff. But I don't think this is a time where that's necessary. Yep. Oh, and um, it could be like perching on a cliff, like that bottom, <laughs> you could put a talon over that bottom thing. So it's like perching on a little branch. That's hilarious. It's too much, but it's, we could. The, the idea is right, but it is also wrong. Yes, classic feature. Uh, I've been using like a similar, and I've been using it on pretty much everything. Uh, it's called Dunbar, and it's uh, an Adobe font. Uh, I forgot who created it, what their name is, but it's a it's a Futura ish kind of very like modern, sleek, sharp. But it has like sixty different variations. Um, and it's got like high X height, low X height, like wide. And it is like Futura, just like expanded into all these different versions. I That's love awesome. the sharpness of that. I almost guessed that again. Um, so you are also, again, big, awesome work on type pairings. How do you decide where the type goes, how much space there is, how, like, how does that happen? Um, that's a good point. I don't think I, I, I asked the question again. <laughs> Basically, how do you figure out where type goes and like yeah. how much space you have in relation to the logo? I, 
I feel like that's trial and error. And I think that's an okay answer to have. Yeah. Oh, totally. Um, Unacceptable. <laughs> <That's fine. laughs> I, I really just try to make it pleasing, visually pleasing. Um, like I looked at this relationship as, as I was putting this uh, in here. I, I like the equal weight of this on the left and this on the right. Um, this logo maybe feels a little bit big and, and that's okay. Um, so the lockup's gonna be maybe a little bit different than what most lockups would be, but um, yeah, I, I honestly think trial and error is a perfectly okay answer. Uh, are there any kind of like ahas in this logo for you? Um, no, not necessarily, other than the star being, you know, Kay. USA vibes. So here's what I saw, and I didn't say it because I wasn't sure we were going with it. So in my brain, because it's auto parts, the antlers look like a shift gear. Like they're 100% um, the same, right? Like the little shift thing. That could be. I'm right? Okay it, that. Yeah, it feels like that secret little, which I love the pitches when that happens like after like you finish the pitch deck and you're like oh it kind of looks like a shift gear and you're like that's going to be key messaging <laughs> in this pitch like now it is very intentionally uh, a shift gear 100 <laughs> hidden away and the client never knows right yes uh, one thing i noticed here is this is so close i'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna take this uh i'm gonna throw this up over here so we don't lose it but i'm gonna uh, create outlines because I want to do some tweaking just a little bit. Oh, Making you can ease aligned and yeah. hopefully. Look at that. It's, yeah, pretty good. I mean, you also it, could probably hit the uh, the R to the K leg pretty close. Uh, that, that, diag that diagonal going all the way from like that R all the way down to the bottom of the K, like that angle looks like it's matching pretty close all the way down. Are you talking about taking this R? No, 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 just, just, just matching the angle of where that R and K it's like, I think that it's hitting pretty much that same angle straight down, like all the way to the S I was just pointing out like the, the geometry of that feels oh, really nice. Yes. Right. Okay. Like all the way down that horizontal feels real Agreed. nice. Agreed. Oh, so, yes, and yes. chat is telling us to save. Thank you, chat. We oh. we will do a save right now. There we go. <laughs> We're doing it. Thank you, chat. MVP. We did it. Yes. Um, yeah. Already, this is feeling pretty good. Um, uh, and Mervin is asking how we moved those letters individually. Can we go through that one more time? So we place some type, right? You're probably familiar with the type tool, and then you can actually change type into shapes so that you can move those around. So can we do that conversion one more time, Ben? Yeah, and I'll do it maybe with these up here. Totally. Um, so what I did was I went up to type and create outlines. And what I did was uh, I double click because now they're objects. Uh, and this kind of isolates within the group. Um, so I'm able to take my guides and I realized I should probably keep it a little bit further away from the R, but that's okay. Um, and now I can just select these individually and move them as I please or shift and collect both of those and shift them over like this. Um, how are you feeling about that R and the E? Sorry, I was mid sneeze. Um, okay. I just don't wanna get too far. This I feels feel. a little. It's it's so, this it's is okay. such a hard lockup because of the four E's and then having the R on different sides of those E's yeah. and having to like kern those differently because of the leg. Like that's just complete nightmare. So it feels right to me. I'm okay with it. I'll where it, it is, yes. Yeah, it's enough of a nightmare to know like you could tweak it a million times and it would still like have a little piece that feels weird. That's true. Um, I wanted to see what this would look like in an avatar because I'm really liking the way it looks. Ooh, let's do it. Um, oh, let's let's copy just in case. Oh yes, and let's definitely talk through what you're about to do um, yes. with that piece up there. Yep. Um, I'm going to select the strokes because those are not objects yet. So I will expand those strokes. I have fill and stroke checked. I'm going to click OK. And right now these are individual objects, right? Um, I probably should make another version. I'll throw this over here for now. 
Uh, just to keep those objects, because as soon as I do this, there's no going back, but I'm gonna go Pathfinder and then Unite. I'm also gonna Unite these pieces. I love doing that with strokes because then you get to see how close you are on guessing what the width of the stroke was. Cause you it outlines and you're like, all right, how many anchor points do I have? And you're like, yes, right amount of anchor yep. points. Nailed exactly. it. <laughs> and speaking of points, uh, I like clicking on um, the minus point uh, when this is selected. Cause then I can see all my points yep. and I see unnecessary points here. So I'll just go in and delete those. Uh, don't want anything ghosting later. That's going to be a problem. Um, so right now it looks like the, the points are all there that need to be there. And if I were to take any away, it would ruin the piece. So we don't yep. want to do that. Uh, um, and yes, Umicorn, a couple of people are saying, uh, in chat, and it, this is a new wish feature is the touch type tool. Uh, the touch type tool would allow you to do some of that changes some and maintain the editability. Um, but at this point, because we're going to start working with them as shapes anyways, they're not really a need for us to keep that edible. Um, and so just outlining it is easier to work with in my workflow and probably Ben's as well. Uh, but yes, people saying it touch type tool is something that you could do to really get in there. Uh, it is just new. And I know a lot of people are still kind of incorporating it into their workflow. Okay. Uh, and then also with this star, uh, now that this one object uh, is one object, uh, I need to take that star and Subtract it. Can we undo that real quick and put a like, color box behind that? And I just sure. kind of want to show the difference of why that matters. So if it's on a color or a photo or something, and let's say that photo's in the background, the logo's on top, maybe we don't want it to be white. We want it to show through what's in the background. Uh, so what do we do for that? Select both and then click minus front. And now you can see we have that nice little curve and it looks like it's punched through so that we can see everything back there. That's right. Um, and depending on the color here, we, we may want to bring that back in, but we'll see. Um, hey, we could actually put our uh, knowledge to use that we learned at the beginning of this stream about how to make something that's negative. We're going to see if this works. We might be able to even keep this red. That's cool. Ooh. Who knows if this auto parts store actually has a social media, but if they did, it's a small town, maybe. Can I give drum, one drum more unsolicited business. advice to this mm -hmm. or thought or question? Uh, it feels like every other angle that we have that comes to a point is like a little bit softer and that star just feels so sharp. Mm. Maybe if we like did some kind of softness on some of those edges, it could help to kind of merge a little bit. I, when it got small, all that I could see was the sharpness of the star, which maybe we want. Um, I say let's let's iterate, yes. but I'm leaving my little green dot here. Um, so you you want to see this just on the outside points, maybe? Maybe I feel like we are going to immediately hate it. I mean, it still ha still has the sharp points on the inside. Yep, and I think that um, maybe it is the the scale the scale of it, like you said, the weight of when it gets smaller in my brain, that, that star just becomes so sharp. Uh, yeah. Where in the large one, it's not. But again, we don't have to worry about it. It was unsolicited. We can throw. No, it's okay. Uh, one thing I did notice as I'm looking, I'm always thinking about angles. Oh, um, this guy. Did you nail that? Can no I do it again. Way no freaking way, Ben. That was close. That is really close. Look at, look at this. Look at that. Who needs that pixel? I do. I do. <laughs> just, just that perfect pixel. So my, my green dots moving friends. Cause, uh, oops. Since fixing that, I'm going to use this one now. Yep. That feels nice. Oh wait, this is the same. We didn't change that. We just changed no, the just size changed of the type, Deer yep. Creek. Okay. Um, so how do you center something that mathematically will not center? We talked about this yesterday. So if I were to group both of these things together um, and also select the circle and click align, 
center, center. This is where mathematically it would throw us and that's not where we want to be. Um, what I would do for this is honestly to draw that rectangle over top of it. Obviously change the color to something else so we can see. And then select the circle behind it. I don't know how many people know this. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell it, maybe this is uh, something that everybody knows. But if you, if you select one thing and then another thing and then click it again without the shift being held down, yep. this tells you what object it's going to be uh, aligned to. Uh, I learned that uh, early on, but probably later than I, than I should have. Yes. And that was just revolutionary. So yes. um, it will align to that circle. It knows exactly where to go. And now we can take our logo and just move it over so it lines up with that rectangle. Yes. And I feel like visually um, that one feels more balanced. And two, a lot of times if I do that and there is like that hangover or whatever, I always move it the difference of that width. So it's like half mm. of whatever that hangover is. And in my brain, it always is like, oh yeah, that feels centered, but it feels centered here uh, of like well, the hangover, half, half of the hang. So half would be about here. So align that to where it was. What do you mean? Uh, so align that to the, like the rectangles right where it was. Yeah. Um, and then move the mark over to be flush. And then because you have the ear hangover, I basically would take the width of that ear and use oh. half of that and then move it to the left that much space. So then I would move it to the left. Yeah. That many things. Oh, well, was that half? Uh, that yeah, oh, half of it, half of the half. Yes, got it. Yep. And just that little okay. in my brain always is the right way, but it's not. Like it might. I've just done that so much in my workflow well, that I'm like, oh, let's think. let's let's do some comparison here because that was. It. I still like it. Um, so maybe it's hard to tell. Maybe from the chat, you let us know. This bar is centered with the bottom, and now this is our more vertically. Uh, uh, optical. Oh, interesting. Yes. Do we want to, let's do an AB test. I'm having a hard time myself. I mean, I know there's more space over here, but yeah. Chat AB test. Do we want a on the left or B on the right? Also, I'm just real nervous to do this because this happened yesterday and this is when things went wrong. So yes, let's <laughs> save, <laughs> save before we do the AB test. Uh, which one are we here. vibing? Yes. So I'll do some finger exercises. <laughs> they have a little bit of a delay. This um, uh, this is also my Patronus, right? Oh, it is? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm just, it's, a white, it's a white stag. I think that's cool. Are you a Harry Potter guy? No. I mean, okay. I've seen the movies. I've never read the books, but yep. I've got nothing against the series. All cool. right. We have it coming in. B-B-A-B-A -B -A -B -A. Doc. Doc is saying split the difference between the two. Okay, it looks like wow, chat is very split on this. Um man, it's it's pretty split. Let's go. I'm okay with, with that, but let's I'll, I'll make let's a go. C here and just move it over ever so slightly. I think that's our winner. <laughs> Um, is, I love that this is like in theory if this was Instagram or whatever this is the way to like hack the algorithm is like <laughs> alright comment That's below great. A, B or C and they just get like a million comments right uh, it looks like B might be the answer uh, chat was very split on it and I kind of agree that like even between us you can kind of tell the difference so we're going with C it's yep. just a little bit to the left it's, uh, it's not perfectly centered down with uh, it everybody wins <laughs> but you you did see that I added a two point stroke. Uh, three looks like it's too much, but two is good. Um, and again, that really only shows us what it would look like if. Um, sorry for the motion sickness. That that really would only show us what it would look like if we compared the two. Oh, to see those different weights. Yep. Correct. So these should feel weightedly the same, although there's less white here because of that stroke. Uh, and I would never hand this stroked version over to the client. Uh, I would always expand that and remove the stroke and keep everything inside, which if you missed the beginning of the stream, I did that. Maybe I can do that again right here, but it's just expanding using the fill and the stroke. 
and then going over to my Pathfinder, merging, and then removing the inside, and then deleting everything else. And I don't think there's any ghosts. Nope. So we can exit out of that by double clicking on the on the artboard, and then Command F brings back our art. Boom. Uh, and a uh, little announcement. So we have about 25 minutes until our artist spotlight that's coming up. Um, if you want to, you can actually nominate someone for the artist spotlight. You can click on uh, over where you are chat in your home, right above that. There's a couple tabs. There's one that says chat, which is where you are now. And there's another one that says info that tells you a little bit about us, uh, where you can follow Ben and then an artist spotlight. And you can suggest someone to be an artist spotlight. You can upload their Behance, their website, whatever. Um, and you also, can suggest yourself if you want to be highlighted here <laughs> on one of those streams you can toss that in there no shame no shame in the no hard shame. sell got to go for it um so you can toss that in there we'll be doing that in about 25 minutes uh john mata who is in chat is going to be our uh community spotlight for today which is going to be so fun ben and i are both like insane fans of his work at, for like different reasons which i love um we realize that it's kind of like the intersections of the stuff that i love and the stuff that ben loves so it's going to be a fun time Totally. Uh, Kevin Green in chat. What's up, Kevin? Hey, nice Kevin. to uh, nice to see you here. Uh, so we got about 25 minutes, Ben. Where do we want to take this play around? Do we want to try to do another speed animal? What's the vibe you want to do? Um, maybe. I do want to get to some Photoshop oh, display. Yes. Let's, let's do the Photoshop stuff. And then maybe after Artist Spotlight, we can do a quick little animal and see if we can fill that time with I some. I agree. Let's I do agree. it. Okay, so I wanted to try um, Waddles down here first. Um, and I'll just use the mark for this uh, experience here. I've got a artboard already. I think I can Photoshop. put, yep, I put our little O in here. Speaking because... of Photoshop, as we jump over to different uh, programs, if you'd like to learn more about Photoshop, there is a daily creative challenge that ha it happens every day um, at, I believe, 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, maybe 9.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, Val, if you can, if you can uh, correct me on that. I think Val is doing the daily creative challenge right now, but Photoshop happens every single morning. You can go to behance.net slash challenge slash Photoshop uh, and get reminders for those. And Val will be dropping that link there. Awesome. Uh, so I've dropped uh, Waddles in here. I'm gonna duplicate my vector smart object and my uh, white background. I'm gonna um, hide these layers and I'm gonna click Command E and that just flattens your layers that you have selected because we're going to go up here. We're going to have some fun with so, plugins. Ben, can I, can I, do you know about flattening as a copy? No. Ooh, magic. Okay. So undo that. Okay. So now just make, uh, so have your two selected there. So yep. Whatever. I don't visible. even need to make a copy there. Uh, yeah. So yep. Turn those both on or, I mean, you have it. Yeah. You have it how it is. So yep. with those selected, uh, command shift E. Command shift E. Oh, uh, hold on. Uh, let me okay, keep going. And I'm there's so there's a way to basically take a screenshot of whatever is there and we'll make a new layer. So let me figure out what the hotkey is. Interesting. It might be command shift option E. Uh, I'll look it up right now and you just keep going. Well, let me try command shift. Whoa, that's not what happened. Whoa, I don't know what that is. Okay, I'll find it as you go and then we can circle. Hey, what did you make me do? Right. I oh, literally, what? okay, whew. Okay. Good. I Oof. thought you'd just mess with my computer and I'll Yikes. forever be able to see the weird colors. Okay, um, try, sorry, try this real quick. One more thing is have on, what do you want on? And then make yep. a new blank layer just on top. There we go. And now try to do the command shift E. Man, okay, I'll find it. <laughs> I'm, I'm on PC and so my hotkeys are maybe the not the right ones. That's All right, okay. keep going. All right. Uh, so we, I want to play with some plugins up here for display. So if we're talking about posting this on Behance, we want to show off our logo, but maybe clean vector is probably not the vibe we want. Um, maybe, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Uh, but I love this uh, plugin from Mr. Retro called Permanent Press 2. Huge fan. Uh, I've used this for a few years and it is just a blast. If, if anybody's a fan of the actual printing process using real printers and inks and uh, silk screens and things like that, 
um, letterpress, hand pulled. I mean, you can have tons of fun with this. Um, I already had something preset that I knew that I wanted to try, but I wanted to go in here. There's so many settings that are, are preset, different kinds of effects, um, but really you can get into these individually. You can even change the colors that we have here. Let's say uh, we wanted this to be more of a lemon yellow. I can change that color here. And now it changed that yellow here, which is really fun. Um, I probably will go back and change that just a little bit. So there's a lot of uh, adjustments that you can make. Even the image detail, obviously it rounded some of those edges because printers are not perfect, especially if they're old. Um, you can change all the paper that we have in the back. Um, this is where I get a lot of my backgrounds for when I do digital collages. Um, Ooh, Photoshop plugins are just the best. I love them. So this one's called uh, natural. I think we'll go with that. Um, you can also add a little bit of color to them. So you wanted to warm it up just a little bit. Uh, you can do colorize. What well, didn't, oh, I see. So you can warm up that paper as much as you want or decrease that. We're gonna keep a little bit of warmth here. Uh, everything else looks good. Uh, and it looks like it's having a little bit of print bleed, someone says in uh, chat. Can you talk about what that is, Ben? Yeah, so so you do have the opportunity uh, to change those. That's the how the plates are set. If you know anything about printing, uh, different colors have different plates. And you have the ability within this uh, plugin to choose that specific color of plate. Uh, so the red one here, I've made it a horizontal offset too vertical offset too. If the vertical offset was off basically back at zero, it would be perfectly placed in here and there wouldn't be any kind of offset. Uh, you can change some of that too with the starve and the gain, um, make it less, or you can kind of block it off and you can kind of see those overlays there, which is kind of nice if you want that effect. Um, I like to have it a little bit off because I like to see just a little bit of uh, the paper. So I'll, I'll take that gain back. See, just that hair is just yep. perfect. It's just enough. Um, but you can also do deboss. Obviously, I'm going to show you the extremes or emboss. So it looks like it's actually like the paper is punched, which yep. is great. Um, and again, you can change the plates individually up here. You can also change the way the ink um, is applied. So I, I chose mercantile down here, but you can choose striated, showroom. Matchbook. They've got all funds of name, all fun That's names crazy. here. But get really specific. Industrial. Uh, and then I can take it one step further. I'm going to still keep the mercantile because I like that. Um, you can say what type of press uh, you oh. want for these edge effects. So it's like something that's wet ink. Um, you can see those edges. I'll zoom in a little bit here. Or rustic press. Some of these are really beat up presses, which is just going to distort the, the paper and the ink yep. together, uh, which is just crazy how accurate this could actually look. Um, I don't know where you would use half of these things, um, but some they look exist. a little bit too extreme, but they do exist. And you, you have a lot of control in here too. Roughness, thickness, opacity, darkness. Um, <laughs> Whoa. Like, I don't know. I mean, that's probably what you would do. Uh, oh, a hundred percent. Yes. A hundred percent. Like make <laughs> it brand. as messy as possible. Yep. Just barely able to interpret. <laughs> uh, I also did feel, Oh, I want it. Uh, I also did find the hotkey. Uh, we were close. It okay. is uh command alt shift E instead of option. Okay. Good to know. This is a magic plugin. It is. I, I wanted to take that emboss or the deboss off. So once you get it to where you like it, like I have those offsets where I want them, I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And the plugin will be done. It just takes a few seconds. And there you have it. So this is a full 1600 by 1200 pixels, 72 DPI. And that looks really legit. That does look really legit.
Uh, so you could display a vector like this and it would still be sharp, but if you can make it look a little bit more real. Yep. Say have fun. Uh, can we turn those back on and try that hotkey just because I want to yes, see what okay. happens. So there, uh, and then- Do I need it, to create a new layer or no? No. So select. command alt shift E. You don't even have to select it. It will just- Say that uh, again, I'm going to go down. I yep. don't have an alt, is that option or control? Let's try let's try option and see what happens, and then we'll try control and see command, what happens. Command, option, yep. shift, E. Shift, E. There we go. Well, there you have it. There we go. Oh, man. <laughs> now, for me to be able to remember that, we'll see. But right? So that did, that did exactly what I wanted it to do. Yes. So I'll do that to do if I want to apply effect or something or a high pass or whatever. It basically just takes a screenshot of whatever is on your artboard and then makes a new layer of it. Very cool. Yes, magic. Thank you, Umicorn, for the translation of alt uh, equals, uh, yes. My my uh, my PC keyboard is very different. I'm gonna pull this over. Oh yes, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. I'm gonna create outlines real quick. Texture, texture. Ooh. I'm just eyeballing that, but I, I like it. Okay, now I get to practice. Here we go. Shift, option, uh, mm -hmm. Hey, ah. I remembered. Yes. All right, back up to permanent press. Two. And what's up, Tunk? Uh, over in Istanbul, Turkey is here. Something cool is happening here. We were just chatting hey, this morning. Hey. Worldwide. Uh, I'll go through some of these. So it does save your last um, custom that you've done. If you like that enough, you can go ahead and save that in your user settings. You can name it something, maybe you name it Waddles McGee. So you'll always remember, hey, I love that texture and paper that I used for my, my rooster. So let's use it again on something else. Uh, it's a great way to, to develop a style, I guess, is to use things consistently. But I'm going to run through some of these. Um, Ooh. Some of them are, are pretty wild. Again, I don't know where you would use half of these. Ooh, that feels so like 90s. Um... Go media, <laughs> like it's got the three color offset. Ooh, that's me. I, that I can just right. imagine this being uh, printed on some boxes that they might have in their store. Yep. Ooh. Mm. So again, I'm, I'm oh, just yeah. trying to fly through these as fast as possible just to show you. I'd get a temporary tattoo. Oh, it has the bleed. Oh, that was the like 80s TV chromatic abrasions yes. were awesome on Hollywood. I love yes. that. Which is kind of weird when it's on paper because yes. you're dealing with something that is a, like an RGB. Um, same thing here. <laughs> yep. Um, but I want to find something that feels a little bit more retro-y. Let's say this brand existed back in 1950. What would that look like? Uh, and I am going to drop the link. Uh, chat is asking where they can get this. Uh, I'm dropping the link in there. It's a really great plugin. Uh, it's a little pricey, but uh, it's it's a great plugin. And so I just dropped the link in there, Val, if you want to uh, make that clickable. Thank you. Ooh, I liked confection. I might go back to that and just change the, uh, the color of the paper because you can see here what it's doing to the uh, the type. Yep. Some of these edges, it's giving it like almost like a corrugated cardboard. Yeah, it looks like it's almost printed on like a parchment paper or like a like a wax paper. Yeah, I, I, I love like that. that a lot. Um, put this down to two, three. Why did you do that? There we go. Two. Um, I'll keep the color but I'm gonna take the color, or I'm gonna keep the paper, but I'm gonna make this, I'm gonna try something brighter, bright white. This is just making me want donuts. <laughs> you know what? I think I'm not gonna mess with the plates or anything like that. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and click okay, but I'm gonna take it even a, just a little bit further with the contrast. Um, Do, ooh, can you, do you, would you, uh, I don't know how to start that question, uh, make that a PNG or does it have to have a flattened background with it? 
Hmm. Like if you just That's a use good question. a version of the vector smart object that was converted and rasterized, would it still have the same effect as a PNG? We can give it a shot. I think it has to have the paper behind it. Oh um, yeah. It also did something funky there. <laughs> oh, it broke itself. Okay, it didn't cool. like so, it. It didn't so the, like it. The answer is yes. <laughs> right. A definitive yes. So there we have our Deer Creek Auto Parts logo that we created. Um, we punched up that contrast, but that still looks really fun to display. Maybe you want to throw that into the end of the presentation and talk about their heritage and their history in that town. I think that'd be really fun yep. to be like, imagine that this logo had been your logo from the start. Um, I like I like that kind of story. Um, so there's that logo and here's the- Yes, Waddles. Rooster, Waddles McGee. So again, there's nothing wrong with showing logos that are perfect vectors that are super clean, uh, but I just wanted to show you a little bit of my process and when I want to show something that looks a little bit more real, yep. that's, how I would, that's how I would do it. Can we, with the last 10 minutes that we have, this is again, so Ben and I are friends. Uh, he gives feedback on stuff that I work on. I give feedback on stuff he works on. Uh, and the number one thing that I talk to Ben about when I'm doing logos is different variations of like stacking logos uh, mm. with type. I can never get it right. And I never feel like it's right. And Ben is the absolute master. Can we do some variations on this as if we were doing a presentation to have a vertical lockup uh, and kind of play around with the different versions of how we could line that type up? Uh, should we do it with Deer Creek or should we do it with... Uh... Ooh, let's do Roost. it with either. Oh, let's do it with Roost because Roost will be, yeah, Roost will be a much better vertical. I thought so too. Um, so you're saying if you wanted something with like the logo on top, or if we wanted something to where like the logo was on the side. Mm, gotcha. Right? Yep. So if you if you all are pitching a logo to a client, a lot of times pitching different variations is a good idea to show, you know, if it was going on a pen, here's how it would look. If it was going as a uh, avatar on social media, here's how it would look. If you're, you know, putting it as a sign, here's how it could be. And so doing different variations like this can get really wonky and weird. Um, and so I always struggle with them. Oh, you did augment the O, you sneaky little man. Well, I, I kept this old one from yesterday. Should we make both of them eggs? Why not? I, I thought that that's what the font was because the oh, S is no. so wonky. I thought like, oh, cool. Like it, it's no, really cool that like I the egg was in there. Custom egg. And I was like, oh, he did do it. We can have double eggs, I guess. Two eggs and an omelet. That's, that's, it feels like a thing. As long as it's not too much. I don't think so. I think it's fun. Okay. Ooh. No, it, <laughs> it wasn't right. Uh, so yeah, we want to get something that feels... Um, not overpowering because you want the relationship to still look um, like it's one big together uh, lockup. Yep. Um, but spacing too, I know we talk about that a lot too, Andrew, with your work is, you know, how far away do we move it? And, and when we present brand guidelines, you know, what do we do? And um, I think it's good to have something that's mathematically something that the client can turn to. So if, you're if saying were, that you want to put it on some kind of grid with guides, Ben? How how on brand for you? <laughs> so if we want to say like it's it's maybe this is too far. I feel like it's too far. Um, let's find a different measurement. Um, maybe just that top bar, the crossbar of the T. Yeah, here we go guessing again. Ben, that's pretty close. That's pretty close. Uh, so let's say it's just the crossbar of the T. That's how far it should be from the type that feels good i like it i think it's good to visualize you know what this could look like on a t-shirt let's say this is the sign out front but they want that um uh waddles mcgee to be the main feature on their t-shirts yep uh so that's what they would choose maybe he would sit fully and the type would be over top um in fact, we could probably do one like that. Maybe. Uh, are you saying putting like the type in the white space? Um, just to go around. Um, oh gonna... yeah, like a little sticker badge. That's a fun maybe idea. This is, maybe this is stupid to do right now, but. 
there's no rules. And the last here's in day two, the last like 40 minutes, there's no rules, Ben, we can do whatever we want. And this (laughs) feels, this feels worth, this feels worth it. We got the one that taught me a lot about this. Um, Type on a path. Are we going to type on a path? We are. If you want to learn more about type on a path, tune in next week for the illustrator daily creative challenges with your host, Andrew (laughs) Hawkrattle. We are doing a a type on a path uh, challenge. So we will be going pretty deep into it. Fantastic. And yes, about five minutes left for the artist spotlight. Thank you, Val. Uh, it's going to be a fun time. You can check out that artist spotlight and nominate people by clicking on the tab right above you, chat. This is gonna this is gonna feel so for some reason like, and I think uh, Ben, you hold on. Let me think about how I want to ask this question and to get into this story. This piece feels very on brand for you. Uh, specifically because I know about your life and I know about a very special thing that happens in your life every year that involves eggs. Can you talk a little bit about mm. the very special thing that happens in your life yes. that has to do with eggs? So specific. Uh, I go to a family reunion every year and this isn't just your typical family reunion. We're talking uh, over probably a hundred people and um, the last event. So it's it's one of those like Americana July on the July 4th day, um, everybody brings a side dish. They provide the main, main meal. There's, um, flags everywhere and everybody's having a good time. Everybody's supposed to bring a game for everybody to play outside. And, um, and the very last game of the day is an egg toss. Yes. And I've played it ever since I was a kid and, um, it's always been fun, but really something happened within the past 10 years that I actually got good at tossing eggs. And I won the first one and then I won the second one. Maybe I didn't win the third the next year, but then I won the the fourth year, then the fifth. And I think this year made number six for me. So I'm like the Michael, I'm like the Michael Jordan of egg toss. Um, He's, you know, Michael Jordan went out and retired after six. So, um, so you, uh, you back to this, you taught me to align path based on the center line. Yes. Um, which might give you a more accurate um, angles to work with here. I'm going to go even bigger here. Let's see. Whoa. Yeah. I don't know if this type actually works with this. Uh, I angle. feel like it could work with like a slogan. Like it would turn into almost like a Heineken kind of if there was more type that went around the side. Um, you know, two eggs in the corner or the, or in the sides is like a little thing. If it was a full kind of badge, sure. but it, it also feels like the brand is minimal. So that would like, just feel like too much. Right. Yeah. I, I don't think it's going to work for this one and that's yep. okay. What we learned yesterday is you make moves and they could be completely wrong. You just move on. Yep. I, I love keeping this stuff on the artboard. Uh, that's something I learned from one of my photographer friends is never delete anything. Uh, I love leaving stuff like this on the artboard because eventually you could come back to it and be like, oh, we're doing a social campaign. And like, oh, let's use this idea, but like in a different way. Um, right. It's always great to just save stuff in there. Yep. Uh, and yes, Stuart says, I'd be putting that on my resume. And Beth is saying, that's really why I married him. <laughs> there you go. Uh, the, the very first year that we were engaged, uh, Beth was my partner. Now she's never been my partner since. So that maybe tells you something, but, Uh-oh. uh, it did not go well. Uh, and so uh, we haven't been partners since I've chosen my partners wisely after that. And we've won ever since probably that, uh, downfall uh-huh. of a year. Yep. Uh, and someone's asking, can we do a version where the type is overlaying that white part of the chicken a little bit, kind of breaking Ooh. the side? Maybe this is something that would go on a pen. Like we're saying, there's that like extreme wide that you need. Um, and again, pen is always a thing that I think of because it's the most impossible to like work with a logo on. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, why not? So I would probably try to find the midpoint here. And go 45. And guys and girls, look what we did again. Ben. Ben, you're too good at this. Oh, no. It's close. It's so close. It's so close. (laughs) That's like one pixel. (laughs) My eye has been trained. It, it, It feels good. Oh, my goodness. So I wanted this angle to hit this angle, to hit this center, to hit that center all the way down. And boy, did we. Boy, did we. 
Yeah, I actually like that. I think that's a that's that's pretty good. Yep, and that's something to where like a little tagline could fill that top space a little bit if we wanted to. Um, that it's just a great option again to present as you know maybe this would be a very very special case, but it's an option. Little brush script on there. Feed your wing addiction. Yes, the wing addictions. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Obviously, I would never use this font, but man, that it's fun. It feels right. It feels right for here. Why not? Like, yeah, that's the fun thing, especially when you're experimenting with stuff like this. It's important to go into areas that you know will never stick, but just have some fun with it because it might turn into something eventually. Just experiment with those ideas. Yep. That's actually really funny. <laughs> I love that. Uh, all right. So it is 1.30 here. It is 4.30 for you, Ben, which means that it is time for our community artist spotlight. Ba -ba 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 -ba. I don't know. It felt right. Um, so today, our artist spotlight is our friend, John Mata. Um, absolutely amazing work. Uh, Voodoo Val is going to post some links if you want to follow along with us to the Behance. Um, and this is awesome work. Ben, I think that I learned about John maybe from you? Possibly. Possibly. I've been um, a fan of John's for a while. Yes. Can you just talk a little bit about why you love this work? What kind of made you fall in love with it and all that fun stuff? I, I can't remember the first piece that I saw of John's, but uh, I was immediately drawn to his uh, love of space. Um, him and I both have a love of space. Um, he did some amazing stuff that maybe I'm not seeing here, but um, some more space posters. I see some Apollo stuff here, um, but obviously he's really, really good about collage. He knows colors really well, uh, texture, pattern. Um, I'm seeing it all. And uh, I love the, the vector work that he does. Um, there's a lot of clean geometric stuff, as you see up here on this piece. Um, I mean, that that's my jam. This is, I can look at this and think, I would totally see the things similarly. Yeah. Um, and I think I love that, especially these these noisy textures. Uh, I used to work with those a lot. You and did. I love that John utilizes them perfectly. Um, but then contrasting that, similar to, to, to me too, you know, we work with collage. Uh, John knows what he's doing. Like there's some really, really beautiful stuff here. Um, and yeah, very that's... high contrast, great yes. color palettes. I don't think I could have come up with this color palette by adding the orange and that pinkish cream. That's beautiful. Yes, this is the thing. Uh, like I said, this is the perfect like shared love of Ben and I, uh, because it has those clean vectors and all that stuff that Ben loves. But then I love the texture and the chaos and like the grittiness of it that is just so perfect, but somehow still refined. Um, and so I love like this, oh my gosh, like mm -hmm. that's all that I want is just the crazy type. Uh, but then it also has those refined pieces. And so I love that it's just like a little step out of my comfort zone. And it's something to me that I see and I'm like, oh, I'm inspired by this and I'm challenged by this. I'm like, how is he doing that? How is he achieving this? Uh, Cause it's just a little bit out. Oh my gosh, the type. This is perfectly retro. I remember this poster for Artists for Education, uh, Brad Woodard's project to get more beautifully designed posters into schools, uh, yes. allowing them to be free downloadable posters for teachers. Um, he had a lot of people take on some uh, really cool subjects. I know I did one for the uh, cell anatomy of plant and animals. And this, this one's obviously math. And John, you've made math beautiful. Uh, yes. This is really, really cool. Um, what was what was that project called, Ben? Artists for Education. I, I don't know if it still exists. I think he's had to take it down uh, for a while. So yes, um, but it's a I, wonderful project. I, I still think you can search for it to see a lot of artists work. Um, but I'm not yes. sure if the project still exists. I was gonna say I forgot I forgot about that. Um, and I think that we both did pieces for that, right? Uh, did you, what was your subject? Uh, I did uh, geometry, I believe. Okay. And then we had a few friends do some more too. Um, yes, I forgot about this project. This is such a fun project. I'll post the link right here in Behance. Um, because it yes, it is just so gorgeous. This work and, and is this is fun too. I'm I'm noticing that John's using some geometric shapes and organic shapes. I think there's a, a nice blend of both. Um, and they, they fit really well. Yes. 
it's it's so balanced it's it man i love it so much it it is just the perfect everything for me it just feels right john we're huge fans <laughs> big fans over here yep uh all right so let's go ahead oh my gosh the hands hands and like the texture in the hands i can't get over it it just like takes me to like the most glorious place <laughs> i'm also, sorry john, you, you you go ahead i'm curious john these these textures of like these these papers are you using like the same ones multiple times or do you have a technique to like get those textures in different ways is there like a pack that you've made that you use on different pieces because i love that like kind of ripped zone that you have but sometimes it looks painterly like what is that uh let us know in chat because again i huge fan uh all right ben let's hop back in and uh kind of let's see we've got what 20 minutes left so do we let's do another animal do we want to do a little speed animal i think we can yes chat chat we're gonna let you do this one uh pick an well, animal well oh, hold on oh ben, i'm gonna have I'm, them pick an animal okay but um I'm going to have them choose from a rejected pile. Oh, Ben's just ready. I thought that we were going to have to like fill a thing and I was going to have no. to like plan a bit. And Ben's like, so, I'm ready. Uh, I had some of these animals chosen because of their cool angles and, and shapes and things like that. So I'm going to probably throw in, you can either choose between a rhino, um, a raccoon, uh, or ring-tailed lemur. All right. So rhino, raccoon, or lemur. Um, Val, if we can actually make a poll real quick, I don't know if we have time. You actually, no, let's not do that. Yeah, do it, too do much it. Okay, yeah, we have Val, time. Val, if you can make a poll real quick, um, between a rhino, a lemur, and a raccoon. Look at this baby raccoon. Look How at its you know? eyes. Uh, let's do a quick poll. Val will be dropping a link uh, to that. And again, sorry, Val, for putting you on the spot. Uh, but we'll be dropping a poll and uh, we can vote. And then we are, <laughs> yes. Yeah, and I'm, I'm not including this in here. Can you do the most, what is that? <laughs> well, hold on, hold on, <laughs> stop the stream. This is not a Star what? Wars creature. I found this uh, creature and I have no idea. Is this maybe the name of it? The Saiga? It. I don't know, Maybe. but I, I thought it was too close to, to a deer for me to attempt it, so. Look at its, look at its saggy little nose. <laughs> that is oh, funky, so I love that. That it, I mean, it looks like a like a Star Wars animal. 100%. Exactly. Um, all right, cool. So we're gonna get that poll going. A chat is a little behind uh, catching up to us. Also, lemurs are one of my favorites. Uh, and while we wait on the poll, Ben, did okay. Speaking of lemurs, did you ever watch Zabumafu? Absolutely, I did. Yes, yes, uh, yes. Hype in chat well, for I, I, I used to watch it when it was called Kratz Creatures. Oh, way back. You're like OG. Oh, gee. Okay, here's another one. Did you ever watch the Jeff Corwin experience? Uh, I mean, I'm familiar with it, but... Okay. All right, Jeff Corwin was like, that was the jam. Uh, all right, Val has dropped the link. It is on. Uh, the link is there. Go click on that link, chat, and vote for your favorite animal for us to uh, do in Speed. the last 15 minutes here. Um, I'm going to cast my vote. I think you know what I'm voting for. Uh, don't know what you're voting for. You don't. I, it's a lemur. It has to be a lemur. That's, okay. I mean, well, that's what I, I've always I thought loved. black and white. That's, that's what your jam is. Oh, that's very true. Uh, all right. They are coming in. We'll give it uh, another 30 seconds or so here. Chat is catching up with us. Um, and yes, Madagascar. I, I actually don't like that the popular character in Madagascar is a lemur. Cause it like ruined it a little bit for me. That's funny. <laughs> And yes, someone is saying that last animal was basically Mr. Snuffleupagus. That's pretty close. It's pretty close. And Andrew, I wore this shirt for you today since everybody's voting. I know you're a Disney <gasps> yes, fan. I am. Uh, I got this shirt from Cotton Bureau. Uh, Christopher, I want to say Mike and Mike, M, -M I C H O N. Yes. Uh, made this beautifully designed shirt. I love the uh, the traditional tattoo of Rose mixed on uh, Mickey's head or Mickey's body there. Yep, I get, I get get I get looks all the time. They're like, "Whoa, that's a funky shirt!" But I like Mira has such niche, great stuff. Yep. Um, all right, it is currently um, come on, chat. It is currently perfectly tied between lemur and raccoon. So wow. we'll give it another ten seconds here, and then we'll see. Goodbye, uh, rhino. Final. Uh, oh no, rhino's not even in the running. Uh, <laughs> all right, we'll give it another ten seconds here, chat. We'll count it down, and I'm gonna do one more refresh, and it is lemur. Forty-seven percent lemur. 40%, 41% raccoon and 12% wow. rhino. So it is lemur. Okay. 
I was really hoping for a raccoon. So here we go. <laughs> Good luck, everyone. Uh, yeah, this is a funky animal because I think his white uh, tufts everywhere is going to be kind of hard. So this one may also be three colors. Oh yeah, let's. Um, why not? We have 15 minutes. We can cheat and do 15 colors. <laughs> okay. What I'm what I'm seeing right now uh, are the eyes. Uh, I love that they're just simple little eyes, and they're so soft and kind. Also, I I do think that lemurs are like actually mean uh, in real life. Are they me, really? Which me really. Yeah, I saw something uh, online of that like they bite. And not like in like mean aggressive ways, but like they bite stuff. And so uh, they'll climb a lot, but they'll also just bite you. Wow. Yeah. I wouldn't Which expect is, that. I know. They look like they just want to cuddle you. So I just made a circle, but I just took a quarter out of it. Um, what I'm seeing here that I'm trying to capture is the uh, thing behind the eye. Oh, yes. The little Batman... Oh, it's yeah, like it, a, it's a like spawn. It's a very odd shape, and I want to I want to make sure it's still recognizable as again back to the likeness of a lemur. Yep. I hope that this captures some of it. And yes, Val talking about the um, Steve Irwin being her hero, and then Steve Fess's costume, who I believe is down in. Australia, New Zealand, uh, talking about the zoo that is down there. And I have been there as well. The Steve Irwin Zoo is, uh, I think, family runs it. And it is fun. <laughs> so cool. Also, something that got me, and this is just a side story. Uh, when I was in Australia, there was a zoo and they had uh, pigeons in the zoo. Because I guess that that's <laughs> like not, a, like Australia is very, Have very... Uh, yeah, they're like very refined on what animals they let into the country so they can like keep their ecosystem. True. And it was like United States pigeon. And I was like, I don't know if this is like a joke that's trolling me or like if okay. it's technically like an exotic animal here. Here we go. But you have to think we have we have kangaroos here and that's almost like the equivalent of them like having cows there. That's true. Right? Yep. Or deer. Like maybe. Yeah. Or so, yeah, the thing that would get me is we'd go out for have coffee in the morning and I'd go sit on the back porch and there's just like cockatoos, like beautiful, like exotic animal that you'd have to like go to a zoo to see or spend a ton of money to have in your house that are just like flying around, hanging out. And I was like, <laughs> what is this place? Uh... All right, Gareth, Gareth coming through again. Chat is MVP here. The weird nosed animal is called a sagia and it is so it native right. to Kazakhstan. Okay. And now we know. Now we know. I'm gonna save this because I think I wanna chop this up. Just by using Pathfinder there. The I love that we've is... literally created Bane. Like this is a Bane animal. Oh no. Well, if we just remove. <laughs> and now it's not. Somehow uh, like with the overlay makes it into like a Bane mask. <laughs> that's funny. I'm gonna take these points back out. I'm not a fan of these lemons. Lemon eyes. Uh, and chat, uh, if you want to, which I'd suggest you do, there is a daily creative challenge coming up right after this. I believe it's with our friend Brandon Gross and his spaceship and cool car that he does for his intros. Um, but he'll be doing the Adobe XD challenge next. You can learn a little bit about XD. Um, and then coming up later today is uh, Draw Along with Kalti Webster. And you know that I got to plug it. You know that I have to do the same list, uh, self promotion. Adobe Office Hours is happening tomorrow at 2.30 p.m. We are having Amy and Jen Hood on the show. We'll be talking all about business, taking your questions. Uh, if you want to submit questions, you can go to bit.ly slash OH cabin chat uh, and submit questions there. Uh, go ahead, mark your calendars. Make sure you're there for that. It's going to be super fun. We might do some giveaways, hang out. Um, so join us tomorrow, 2.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for Adobe Office Hours. So I just took the uh, shape that we had for the uh, muzzle there, and I think I can try to. Oh, that's not wrong. That's not wrong. And maybe look at this. That's not wrong either. That's, that's so much of design wrong. is like, it's not wrong. And this is actually turning out very right. Man, it's crazy how you found like, cool, this is this is one of the shapes. And then it's just become, cool, that is the shape. Like, we're just going to use that shape. 
Yep. And we're going to do a little bit similar thing that we did yesterday. Because they're furry creatures, I want to see. Oh, you know what I'm going to do? Some little tufts. I'm going to make sure those are on here. And I'm going to object blend Ooh. just to find that perfect um, midway point. Yep. Oh, what was your, oh your preview. OK, it wasn't blended already. All right. And then expand. So now that lives perfectly with uh, as an individual shape. Sure and as Bicolane is saying, this is totally crazy. I agree. I love watching Ben work because it it like you watch it and you're like, oh, yeah, totally. Like, it's so simple. And then you try to do something like this and it's like, it was so simple. <laughs> <laughs> Your brain just thinks in that different way of it thinks in shapes and getting your brain to think in shapes if you don't already um, takes some training. It does, it does. Um, I would watch some phenomenal uh, designers out there when I first started and um, that's not right. Um, it got a little capuchin on. with that nose. Yeah, I, I still like this. Um, I lost my train of thought. Oh, um, I used to watch designers make things and I'd be like, oh, I wish I could do that. I really wish I could do that. And it, the wishing didn't do anything, but putting in the work actually did. Um, so if, if you're looking at this and you're thinking, I wish I could do that, or I wish I could see, see things like, like him, you can, it just takes practice. Yep. So uh, don't let anything stop you from, from pursuing something that you want to do because you do have the ability, but it really is just a trained eye. And that comes with time and practice. Yep. And make sure that you're also taking uh, some clout to seeing it as you. Uh, I know a lot of early designers look at people and be like, oh, I have to be like that, or I have to figure that out. It's good to figure those things out, but then use those as tools to express your own voice and your own style. I think we've got a it's pretty, pretty good. It's good. I think I'm gonna round well, no, I'm going to leave it pointed. I like the points. Um, I think right now, really, if, if we had more time, how much time do we have in? Uh, we have about eight minutes. Okay. Uh, we uh, have about, depending on how much recap, I don't think we need to do a lot of recap because we kind of tracked along well. So we got about, I don't know, six minutes, let's say. Okay. I might try you to bring do rock in. in? No. <laughs> I was like, is he about to push for the raccoon too? He's oh crazy. Uh, no. I did uh, notice some of these things are not centered. So let's oh, do that right now. Do the technicals. Uh, and Kelly Turrell is asking, do these live streams ever show off iPad apps? Um, yes, question mark. Um, I, every now and then we do. I know in the Daily Creative Challenges when I do Illustrator, we'll show off some Illustrator on iPad. Um, but we do have an entire season of Adobe Office Hours dedicated to the Adobe mobile apps. It is called uh, Office Hours Adobe Abroad. If you want to look on YouTube on the Creative Cloud channel, um, or you can go to behance.net slash live slash students. And there's an entire season of eight episodes. Each one shows an Adobe app. We do Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator, Arrow. We do um, Adobe Capture, all kinds of fun stuff. And we will be highlighting Adobe Capture next week in the Illustrator Daily Challenge as well. So tune in for those. They do exist out there. I love, I love the precision. Thank you. It does matter. Like it, it definitely does, does, it does. matter. Um, what I want to do is bring in some more of that white from their fur. Um, trying to think here. It's not a little face. I don't want to make him creepy. But they did. They do have little beady eyes. You know, I was trying to cheat and make them <laughs> the a little eye bit difference is so perfect. <sighs> it's just giving me that weird stink eye. Oh man! Where is that going? Oh, it's going behind. Goodness gracious! 
You just got a little bit more hyper focus. That's all. Uh, I'm trying to see other shapes. I see some darkness coming in right here. So I'm actually going to just duplicate this. I was going to say, yeah, the darkness in the head and then maybe a little bit in the ears would be helpful probably. And you're right. Let's see. How would I do this? Um, that gray that you have is really like it just it's a good gray thank you i really i think i just clicked somewhere in this region it, yeah it's like got a little bit of a tone to it that okay this is the gray that like some mom went to home depot and picked out paint and like there were seven <laughs> different options and this is the one she's like it has a little bit of warmth to uh, it but it's still like yes this is that gray i think i'm just gonna take this completely i don't know it, it could be too much Maybe not. I like it. It feels good. Andrew, can you believe we've done how many animals now? Four? That's true. Yeah, let's do this. We have about four minutes left. Let's do a recap of all the things that we've done because we have done some amazing work here. Thank you. Um, that's not right. Oh, okay. Uh, I, if I had more time, I would go back and change a few things. But hey, that's not bad for a few minutes. Uh, you know me, I can't leave this alone. So I'll be tinkering on this. It's good. A little it's going to happen eventually. Yes. It's going to happen. But All right. Let's go back in the to the last beginning. few minutes. Yes. We started with a, with a rooster. Uh, all my work got deleted, started over, um, ended up in a pretty good spot, but maybe looked more like a chicken. Uh, I worked a little bit last night on my own and made it, uh, the true rooster that we all know and love Waddles McGee even was able to work in a one color logo, which was my goal. Um, and we also got to work on this little bear up here, unnamed bear, or no, the, the honey bear. What was yes, the honey? The blue bear honeycomb. Blue bear honeycomb. Uh, and we made a couple different versions. And then we uh, did this Deer Creek, Deer Creek Auto Parts today, which was a lot of fun. Uh, not a whole lot of iteration. It looked like we had a pretty good idea of where we wanted to go in the logo and in the photo. Um, but then we also opened up some Photoshop, learned about some plugins, some textures that we learned and uh, applied it to both. And then just in the last few minutes, we uh, had the chat determine what we wanted to uh, work on next. And it was this lemur here. So it's just a tiny uh, little lemur. It's a tiny little lemur. Whoops. Uh, can we go into, well, let's do this. Can we go into outline mode and just look through all the artboard and just see how many simple shapes that we've used? Yeah, there's there's nothing complex here. Nope, no organic or pen tool all, stuff. I think these are my these are my favorite to look at just because they really are just circles, yep, uh, squares, rectangles, triangles. And again, I think back to like fifth grade, we had like a huge tub of little wooden blocks that were different colors. And there was like, you know, a diamond and a circle and a rectangle that like you could build this with that and it would look so cool. And I think a lot of your work is that super simple shapes. And then you round those corners and suddenly it becomes these complex, unique shapes. True, that's exactly right. And I think the more you can see those shapes naturally when you're looking at objects, the, the better you'll be, it's good practice. Um, just even looking at this, you can automatically see some shapes. Magic. Um, all right, let's, uh, go ahead, Ben, you have great advice. Let's do some advice to close the stream out. I got about a minute and a half. What advice do you have people starting out with logos, trying to figure out their journey? What advice can you give to our, uh, audience that is watching? Um, everybody has their own style, but I think it, it comes from admiring or liking somebody else's style, whether that's super deep in like graphic design history, like Saul Bass or, um, um, oh, the name escaped me. Anyway, uh, it could be somebody from history or it could be even somebody modern that you really like. Um, it's okay to copy their work. Just don't copy and post the work. Um, copy it all the time. Because if you, if you think, oh, these geometric shapes, how does, how does he do it? 
you know, start copying my work and then you'll say, oh, this is actually pretty easy and you're, you're going to get trained in how to do it. Uh, so copy, copy, copy. Just don't yes. ever try to post it as your own. Never. Um, save those for yourself. Um, but I think I remember in, in design school, um, we were told to copy logos, but they weren't anything like beautiful. It was just like copy this logo because they wanted us to learn how to use the pen tool. Um, and that wasn't very fun. Yep. But copying logos to learn how something was created, I've done that. And I think that's a wonderful uh, practice. Um, even at my 14 or 15 years in this industry, um, I still think would be really profitable to see how did somebody build that um, and trying it for yourself. Yep. Absolutely. Um, so thanks for joining us today, Ben. And you can go ahead and uh, see more of Ben's work on his site, uh, which we will drop in the chat there. And then make sure that you tune in tomorrow to 30 p.m. for the uh, office hours with the hoods. I'm dropping the link in there so you guys can go ahead and set your calendars as well. So thanks so much for joining us. Stick around for the Daily Creative Challenge with XD. And we'll see you another time here on Adobe Thanks, everyone. Bye.